In this lesson, we'll learn about the Linux file system. It is a lot different than Windows, so I'm going to give you an introduction on the various topics. I didn't show it before, but I'm going to show you now. We have an explorer here in this button. You can click on it and a window shows up with the list of all of our files and folders. You are directed to your home directory, which contains your desktop, documents, downloads, and so on. I want to talk a bit about the file tree in Linux. In Windows, usually you have the C drive for your hard disk, then the D drive for the DVD or something like that. And if you have extra hard drives, you get an E drive or an F drive. You get flash drives, for example, under the G letter and so on. Everything goes from the disk onward. In Linux, it's a little bit different. Instead of basing the files under a physical structure, it uses a more logical structure, meaning the file system begins at a root and then all of the files are based off that root location. If I go to files and enter location, you can see the full path for our home directory. It's under slash home slash Jose. I'm going to go up a folder and you can see our folder under slash home. And if I go up again, you can see we go to the root. The root is represented by a forward slash, and everything goes after it in between slashes, representing each different folder. You see a bunch of different folders that represent our Linux system. Every folder has its responsibility, just like in Windows. Slash bin, slash sbin, and many other bin folders inside, for example, slash user, contain all of our binaries, all of our applications that you use regularly. For example, Google Chrome, the music player, the Twitter client, and many more. All of them are usually under slash user slash bin. As you can see, there are a lot of different applications here. All of these different icons that you see here represent applications. Typing in control G and then typing in fire, you will see the shortcut for Firefox. Firefox is just a shortcut to somewhere else. So if I click on it, you will see a script that launches Firefox. Let me just close this so you don't get confused. Okay, let's move on a bit. I want to mention a couple of different folders here. Slash dev contains all of the devices in the computer. Every piece of hardware that's connected to your computer is represented by a file in this folder. Pieces like the CD-ROM drive, memory that are represented by RAM, and many different devices are also represented in here. Keyboards, mice, and also flash drives, for example. The processor is also represented under CPU. This is not very important. You should not be messing around with that as of this course. You should only know that all of the devices are under here. Slash Etsy contains configurations for most of our applications, if not all of them. It's a convention that every application contains configurations, and so every configuration goes inside this folder. You can see configurations for Firefox, all of our fonts, printers, network, and many more. Let's move on. The home directory, I've explained it to you. And then there's our temp folder. The temp folder is actually quite unique because every file that goes into here is deleted after every reboot. This is a good place to store temporary files you don't want to store in between sessions. For example, you're trying to install a package and that package needs to be stored somewhere so it can install. It goes right in here in the temp folder. So every time you reboot your computer, those packages, you know, with all of the source code and configuration options are deleted. These are the essentials of the Linux file system. I want to show you something else. I want to talk about hidden files. And for that purpose, I am going to create one file. I'm going to create an empty document called file.txt. A standard text file, which is empty. I'm going to type in hello world. I'm going to save using control S and control Q to close it. You can see the contents of the file and everything. To make a file hidden, you type in F2 and change the contents of the file to include a dot just before the name of the file. 
every file that has a dot prepended to it becomes hidden. So now if I reload the window, you will see that the file is not there, it's hidden. How do we access that file? Well, what do you do? You need to go to Files, Preferences, and then click this Show Hidden and Backup Files. Let's tick the checkbox so we can access them. All you need to do is click on a different representation. I'm going to click on this one and then again for this. And you can see that our file is right there. Along with many different files that are already hidden from us. Configurations for our user account, personal email, configurations on Firefox, for example, cache, and many different files. So if I go ahead and change this back to be a visible file, you just remove the dot, and then I'm going to the preferences again, tick the checkbox again, change the visualization, and there you go. All you see is our visible files, including this one. Another thing about the file system in Linux is permissions. And permissions in Linux are actually pretty solid and pretty easy to understand. You have three different control lists. One for yourself, another one for the group you're in, and the last one is for everyone else. And for each different category, you will assign a specific set of permissions. I'm going to click on this file and click on Properties. There's a tab called Permissions, and you see all of the categories that I just mentioned. You get Owner, Group, and Others. You are the owner of the file because you created it. You belong to the group of your own group. Each user gets his own group. So the group Jose exists, and it only has access to read only. And then there's everybody else. For each different group, you get a different kind of access. You get read and write or read only. The same goes for the group. And for the group, you can actually use no permission whatsoever. And the same for the others. You can also prevent everyone to execute this file as a program. In this case, it is turned on, so you don't have permission to execute it, but you can do so. You can click on the checkbox and you will be able to execute this as a program. It doesn't make any sense though because it's just a text file, but you'll be able to execute scripts, for example, in Ruby. And if you don't have this checkbox ticked, then the Ruby file won't be executed at all. So this was a very simple introduction to the Linux file system. I hope you get used to it as it is very different from Windows. I understand that permissions in Windows can be a little different, and this is what actually makes Linux so robust. Most of the files that you see on top here are protected. Only the root user can access these files and manipulate them. You will see why once we get to delve into details on development. A regular user is not able to access the lib folder and manipulate all of those files. It's up to the administrator of the system to do so. Regular users can't do that. There are no administration roles in here, Instead, there's a facilitation on providing your password and mask yourself as the administrator and perform those tasks. That's why when we got to the Ubuntu Software Center and wanted to install a package, you were asked to provide a password. So with that being said, let's jump into the next lesson where I'll teach you how to use the terminal, the most powerful tool in Linux ever. I'll see you soon.